Counting has begun in the Democratic Republic of Congo following Wednesday's December 20 presidential and parliamentary elections. According to the French news agency, the AFP, election authorities announced Wednesday night that, vote, that voting will continue today Thursday in areas where voters could not cast ballots. Reporter al Katati Sibati Jaffa is in the eastern DRC capital city of Goma and tells me that Wednesday's vote was marred by delays in some parts of the country. Local of DRC presented themselves in their voting bureau in order to vote, and some of them voted, but we must know that many of them didn't vote too, because some territories of DRC, such as Ruchuru and Masisi, are not concerned by this vote, but even where people were supposed to vote, some bureau didn't open and others opened very, 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 very late. That pushed voters to do not stay at the voting bureau as things started late. And I left one of the voting bureau very late at 10 p.m. And it was between voting and accounting voices. There are some reports of delays in voting and logistics. What was your experience? Uh, this election faced a lot of logistical difficulties, energy, and sometimes the voting machine was producing some problems and had to stop. So we can't say that many people, even the half of Congolese population, had voted because I visited more than five voting centers and everywhere people was saying we are not voting. And all of this, as I said before, is the result of a bad preparation of the Electoral Commission. What are the opposition candidates saying, Jaffa, about the voting process? I already heard from Dr. Mukwege, the Nobel Prize, and Martin Fayulu, who are accusing Chisekedi and the Electoral Commission to joke with Congolese people by organizing this kind of election. Because for now, some areas, people were not able to vote because they didn't get electoral kits. They have to vote for tomorrow. So the election is not taking one day, but may take two or more days because in some areas, locals attacked equipment and destroyed everything. There was not election in, in that zone and they need a new deployment to get election. And we can't know when that deployment will take place, tomorrow, the day after tomorrow, or after a week. So we are facing a kind of election where no one knows what is what. And the candidates from the opposition are accusing the government of the DRC to do this in order to control how people vote so that they can smuggle some voices. Sani has begun counting the ballots. How long do you think it will take before we can get uh, preliminary results? According to the calendar of Seni, the results of election must be announced no later than 10 of the month of January. But the problem is still the same. Seni organized this election in all the country, but some areas didn't vote, and Seni had to organize their voting moment. We don't know when, tomorrow or how much days after, and we still don't know if that won't impact negatively the calendar so that on 10 people may wait for the result or not. That was reporter Jaffa Katanti speaking with us from the city of Goma in Eastern Democratic Republic of Congo. Liberia's president-elect Joseph Boakai says his administration will fight corruption irrespective of who is involved. He says transparency will begin with him and his cabinet declaring their assets. In this exclusive interview with viewers Peter Clotty, President-elect Boakai says every official in his government should be ready to serve the public or they should go somewhere else. I believe uh, in fighting corruption, you always have to start with yourself. You have to be the example. And corruption is not only among government officials, but it has become a culture. We came as a rescue mission 
And we know one of the biggest problems there is corruption. And I want to say that we start by making sure those people that we bring to cabinet are people of integrity. And secondly, I want to make sure that even beginning with myself, we we'll declare our assets. Mm. And I want to make sure that this is well known, the purpose of coming to government to know that it's public service. And if you are not ready to serve the public, you can go elsewhere. But we want to make sure that we start on a clear note that the people of our country stood on line, they protected the votes, not to bring a team again that will do the same thing that the other people are doing or worse. So it's a clear message. Declare your asset. Make sure that we are prepared to audit the outgoing government so that they tell us, tell the librarian people of their stewardship, and to make sure that we start on a footing where people know that they come to serve the public and not themselves. If they don't understand that, they actually fall where it may. Mm. Mr. President, like you talked about asset declaration starting from yourself and the people who work with you, as well as the outgoing administration. How do you plan to avoid the semblance of targeting people? Because some people will say these are politically motivated to tarnish their reputation or to go against uh, them, people from certain tribes or specific parts of the country. How do you plan to avoid this? We are aware of that. And when we talk about auditing, it's not going to be a Liberian auditing. We want to make sure that our international partners work with us for a public tender for competent and renowned auditing firm that will be qualified at an international level to make sure they come on board to do that. Mm. We are aware of people saying wish hunting, wish hunting. But I don't think it's wish hunting when you have to account for your stewardship, but it has to be in, done in a way that is well-established uh, entity with repetition to make sure that it audits and make sure that it reports to the public the findings. Well, sometimes people say that politicians make lofty promises when they are campaigning, but when it gets to governance, it becomes different. What would be different? Assuming allies of yours, family members of yours, or people you, who are close to you, family members, are accused of corruption during your administration, Mr. President-elect. How do you plan to tackle this specifically? I'm not coming new to government. Right. Although in different positions, I ran a public corporation that was credible. And I can tell you that I come to work not with friendship. I have friends, but there is a clear line of demarcation between friendship, family, and managing. With the experience that we come with a country that celebrates 176 years and with the life of our people living below the poverty line, I don't think we come into government again to start thinking about our family. I think we come there to make sure that we give the Liberian people hope, and I'm committed to that. Liberia's president-elect Joseph Boakai was speaking with viewers Peter Clotty here in our... Justice Joy Uwana, a distinguished high court judge in Nigeria, was kidnapped while returning from a court session on Monday night in southern Aqua Ibon State. The incident occurred along Uyo Okobion in Olomo town, where unidentified gunmen ambushed the judge's vehicle. Tragically, the assailants not only kidnapped Justice Uwana but also fatally shot her police guard during the abduction. The incident unfolded as the gunmen opened fire, targeting the judge's security detail before swiftly taking Justice Uwana and her driver away. The police spokesperson in Aqua Ibon State, Odiko Madon, termed the incident 
as unfortunate and confirm that security forces are actively investigating the matter. As of now, no group has claimed responsibility for the abduction. However, it's not worth that criminal gangs frequently engage in abductions for ransom in certain regions of Nigeria. The abduction of Justice Joy Uwana highlights the ongoing security challenges in the country, prompting intensified efforts by law enforcement agencies to address and prevent such incidents. Four French civil servants, intelligence agents, according to a Bulkinabi source, and computer maintenance technicians, according to a French democratic source, were arrested in Ogadougou at the beginning of December. We learned Tuesday evening in a context of very tense relations between Burkina Faso and France. We are in the process of verifying the real field work of four French nationals presented as agents of the DGSE, External Intelligence Editors Not. They are currently before investigators, said the book Nabi source. For its part, a French diplomatic source declared to AFP that on December 1st, four French officials, holders of, of diplomatic passports and visas, were arrested in Ogadougou by the Burkina police. These four technicians were in Burkina Faso to carry out a computer maintenance operation for the benefit of the French embassy. December 14th, they were indicted and transferred to the Ogadougou Detention and Correction Center. She continued, the same source adds that the French Consulate General was able to exercise consular protection and visit them. The French government takes note of the ongoing legal proceedings but rejects accusations that these technicians were sent to Burkina Faso for reasons other than their computer maintenance work. He requests their return to France without delay, concludes this diplomatic source. According to a European diplomatic source, these French people are known to their Burkina B colleagues. The magazine Jeune Afrique wrote on Tuesday that the four men are accused of espionage. The Burkina indicated the brother country of Togo is helping to find a solution.